Hello and good morning. Uh, welcome uh, to Bell Springs United Methodist Church in person and online. So if you're online joining us this morning, we're so glad to have you with us. Uh, we may be very few in number in the building, but the presence of God uh, is with us. I want to step over the camera and give the folks here a chance to wave hello. Jane, wave hello to everybody. All right, so we are here and we are gathered here in this place to worship God and we are glad that that you are with us as well. We uh, will continue for the time being to offer worship in this capacity, both online and in person, at two services, 8 a.m. and 9.45. So, again, our top priority is safety. So we will continue to uh, do this to keep everyone safe. As we continue to pray for this ongoing uh, pandemic, uh, we pray for healing uh, and for recovery. Uh, and in the meantime, we pray for strength uh, in the time being. A couple of announcements. Um, we are making plans uh, for the, the annual One Day of Hope event. So uh, that event is scheduled October the 24th. And each year we collect uh, shampoo bottles. So we're asking everyone to please collect shampoo bottles. And we will donate those um, for, for the One Day of Hope event. Uh, so we'll be collecting those from now until the Sunday uh, before. Also, we have a, a special joy to share. Uh, we will have a baptism uh, next Sunday. Uh, so Aaron Farrell uh, is scheduled to be baptized uh, next Sunday. Uh, it will be in the evening. Um, our neighbors up at Noah Fort Baptist Church uh, have been kind enough to allow us permission to share uh, to use their site um, on Noah Road. So if you're familiar with that location, it's just up Noah Road, directly across from the church. You follow Noah Road for about a mile or so, and you'll come up to the site. It will be on the left side of the road. Uh, so the only place we're going to be able to park is on the road. So what we'll do is line up cars on the, on the side of the road, on the same side, ask everyone to turn their hazard lights on, uh, park there, We'll walk down to walk down to the creek for the, the baptism. Uh, it'll be at 6 p.m. in the evening, so hopefully by that time the, the weather will be cool enough uh, to enjoy comfortably outside. Uh, but we are planning for, for that uh, next Sunday at 6 p.m. And so, again, we, we look forward to that occasion to be able to celebrate God's gift of baptism with, with Aaron. Uh, we pray for everything to, to go well for, for that day. Well, with that, let's, let's enter into worship now. This is the day the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want to offer a prayer for our opening prayer for worship. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, the words to our hymns will be on the screen. So our opening hymn will be, My Hope is Built. Let us sing. <laughs>
Aren't you glad for the solid ground of Christ? Well, we'll, we'll go to God now with our prayer needs and joys. Uh, if you're online, I would welcome you to please text your prayer request. You'll find my number in the caption. Uh, it is 931-450-3422. So you are welcome to please uh, text your prayer request to me, and I'll be glad to share those in worship. Uh, each Sunday, we name churches across our congregate across our conference uh, in prayer. So we name one church from each district uh, in prayer. So today we pray for these churches by name. We pray for Monterey United Methodist of the Caney Fork River District, for Patterson Memorial of the Cumberland River District, for Riverside of the Harpeth River District, for Mount Zion of the Red River District, and for Ransom of the Stones River District. So we pray for these churches by name today and churches everywhere in whatever form they are worshiping. Of course, we want to continue to pray for our community and our nation uh, as we continue uh, to live uh, in a changing world, a changing environment with, with the COVID crisis. So we continue to pray for healing. Uh, we pray for all those who are at work uh, to uh, create a vaccine uh, and uh, for, especially pray for all those who are sick and those who have lost loved ones. We remember them and, and pray for them today. Um, are there any prayer requests that you want to share this morning? Travel mercies for several families we know traveling. Thank you. Okay. We, we pray for those who are traveling, so we remember those today. Jane? I have a friend named Jane that was around my mom's age, and she knew her real well, and she would come to Zumba, and she was just a real active little lady. And she's fighting cancer in Chattanooga now. She had to move down there. And I think this is going to be her last week, but she's not sure of chemotherapy, and I just like Okay. Her name is Jane. <laughs> okay, thank you. Praying for Jane, who is also who's battling cancer. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to check my phone. I'm not seeing any prayer requests yet. So. All right. Any others? Well, let's go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we humble ourselves this day. God, we offer you our thanks and praise. We thank you for the joy that it is to be in your presence today. We can be reminded of your presence with us in all of creation. God, we trust that you are indeed with us, that you lead us and guide us. We pray for those that we've called by name today. For those who are sick, we pray for healing. God, for those who are Saddened by loss, we pray for your comfort, for your care. We pray for your church today, O oh God, in whatever form churches are gathering for worship. We pray for your gospel to be proclaimed and for souls to be saved. Lord, that folks would hear the message of the gospel and respond by giving their life to you, by accepting your grace that you freely offer to all who will come. We pray for your grace, O oh God, today to strengthen us for these days. We pray that you would help us to guard against uh, doubt, to guard against despair. We pray that you would strengthen our hearts to, to rise in, in the challenges that are before us, knowing that you strengthen us for every good work. We pray for your love to be known in our hearts and throughout the world today. As we sing your praises, oh God, we, we seek your presence. We ask for a word from you today. May our hearts be open to receive the word you have for us this day, that we may go forth with joy and with peace. And we pray the way that you taught your disciples to pray. And I invite you to please join me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's softer lesson will be from Psalm 31, verses 15 through 21. I invite you to hear the word of the Lord. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Do not let me be put to shame, O Lord, for I call on you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let them go dumbfounded to Sheol. Let the lying lips be still that speak insolently against the righteous with pride and contempt. Oh, how abundant is your goodness that you have laid up for those who fear you and accomplished for those who take refuge in you in the sight of everyone. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from human plots. You hold them safe under your shelter from contentious tongues. Blessed be the Lord. For he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me when I was beset as a city under siege. I had said in my alarm, I am driven far from your sight, but you have heard my supplications when I cried out to you for help. Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts haughtily. Be strong and let your heart take courage all you who wait for the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn will be, We'll Understand It Better By and By. It's number 525 in the hymnal. Again, the words are on the screen.
Song leading is not my gift. <laughs> we got there though, didn't we? Yeah, thank you, Jane, uh, for, for that. We will understand it better by and by. And I think that hymn has a message for us uh, in these days. Our scripture lesson uh, from the New Testament uh, will be from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 and verse 12. Hear the word of the Lord. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, but then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God indeed. Let's go to God in prayer now for the, the preaching of the word. Will you please pray? Almighty, all-knowing, and ever-present God, by your goodness and grace, we approach this divine appointment for the proclamation of your living word that so faithfully speaks to our condition. Grant that our ears listen carefully to the voice of your Holy Spirit. Grant our eyes to see your kingdom at hand and fill our hearts with courage to respond in joyful and faithful obedience. We pray in the name and to the glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's sermon continues the theme of compassion. I've been preaching on this theme now for some weeks. I'm taking a verse-by-verse approach through this chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 considering what it means to learn to to love like God loves. That we would go through all the challenges of this year with a a 2020 focus. That we would be led by the virtues of faith and optimism, compassion, unity, and to be sent in mission. Knowing that we can face whatever challenges are before us with a faith that dares to live, into the unseen, the unknown, and the uncertain, believing in what can be until it is. That we can be led by the virtue of optimism, to have a resurrection hope, to believe in a good outcome against all opposing odds. That we can be led by the virtue of compassion, to learn to love like Jesus. For the Christian life, Learning to love like Jesus is really what we are called to do. And we are not left on our own. God has sent us the Holy Spirit to pour the love of God into our hearts that we might learn more and more day by day, by and by, a little bit more about the love of God. It is a lifelong process of of learning the love of God. And... When we face challenges like we're facing challenges today, we can learn what it means to to grow by God's love, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and keep in mind that our vision of what we see before us is so limited. And there will come a time when this year will be behind us and all of the challenges that we're facing now will fade away. My prayer and my hope is that what will not fade away is the love in which God is pouring into our hearts now. That love would would not fade. And that we would draw deeply from the wells of God's love. That we would face the the hurting world around us with the compassion of God. That we would face the, the temporary struggle with the eternal love of God. Now here in this passage, Paul is using a comparison to describe the age to come when the fullness of God's salvation will be revealed in its entirety. But for now, we can only see a dim reflection of what will be. The hymn that we did our best (laughs) to sing and we'll understand it better by and by. 
It's a great gospel hymn that so many are familiar with. Uh, the Gaithers do a much better job with it than, than we could do. But I, I love to hear that hymn and to sing along with, with that hymn. If you follow the United Methodist Discipleship Ministries, they, there's a website that's created that you can research the history of many of the hymns that, that we sing. And I pulled up uh, their article describing the history of this, of this hymn. Uh, the article is written by Michael Hahn. The hymn is written by a man by the name of Charles A. Tinley. And I want to share uh, what I found in, in this article. Uh, the article cites the lyrics of, of the hymn, We are tossed and driven on the restless sea of time, somber skies and howling tempest, oft succeed a bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day when the mist have rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. Can you hear the words of Paul's letter here? Can you hear the words, we may now see through a dim mirror, but there's coming a day when that dimness will begin to eventually fade away. Charles Tinley, born in 1851, died in 1933. He was one of the eminent preachers of Methodism at the turn of the 20th century. The hymnologist James Abington has called Tinley a pastor, an orator, a poet, a writer, theologian, and social activist. Father of African American hymnody, um, progenitor of African American gospel music, and a prince of pre preachers. Tinley was born in Worcester County, Maryland, the son of Charles and Esther Tinley. And his mother died when he was only two years old, left with his father who raised him. Dr. Abington comments that biographies often refer to Tinley's slave ancestry, but that an autobiographical reference in his book of sermons implies that he was actually not a slave. The economic conditions were very difficult after the death of his mother, forcing his father to hire him out to get by. African-American scholar Bernice Johnson Reagan notes that this practice was not unusual for freed blacks. Hired out workers often labored alongside of slaves, experiencing much of their reality of the slave plantation. The major difference was that there was some remuneration and hired out workers did get the opportunity to, to go to their own homes. And Tinley moved to Philadelphia as a young man attending school at night. And he said of himself, I made a rule to learn at least one new thing each day. He was self-taught. Now, he never graduated from college or seminary, but his personal library collection of books that he had read numbered over 8,000. He took Greek from the Boston School of Theology and Hebrew from a synagogue in Philadelphia. Tinley was awarded two honorary doctorates of divinity from colleges both in North Carolina and in Maryland. From 1887 to 1900, Tinley served a short-term itinerant positions until he became the presiding elder in the Wilmington District in 1900. Tinley granted a, a license to preach from Bainbridge Street Methodist Church, where he was employed first as a janitor uh, between the years 1880 and 1885, and thus became a member of the Delaware Annual Conference. In 1902, he was assigned to pastor the Bainbridge Street Methodist Episcopal Church. Now, his return to the congregation as a pastor after being the janitor was not universally appreciated, you could maybe imagine. But since he had moved more than 15 years earlier as the janitor, but the 150th anniversary journal of the congregation notes that 
all were pleasantly surprised, for as Tinley mounted the rostrum, wearing a Prince Albert coat, then the garb of many African-American Protestant preachers, he had the dignified bearing and acquired during his previous appointments. They were further <clears throat> surprised when Tinley delivered a masterful, soul-gripping sermon that brought loud amens and praises. In 1906, the congregation moved from Bainbridge Street, having gone through difficult negotiations to purchase Westminster Presbyterian Church, a sanctuary that seated 900. In its new location, the name was changed to East Calvary Methodist Episcopal Church. As the church grew to a multiracial congregation of 10,000, the facility was strained to its limits. After his death, the church was named Tinley Temple. Tinley Temple United Methodist Church was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2011. <clears throat> Reverend Carlton Young notes that the hymn, we'll understand it better by and by, was one of eight hymns written during a difficult period in Tinley's life when negotiations were underway for the purchase of Westminster Presbyterian Church on Broad Street. It reflects aspects of Tinley's ministry through preaching aimed to lift the spirits of the turn-of-the-century urban African Americans. One can imagine that Tinley, using this song to punctuate his sermons, offered hope to those assembled not only through the exegesis of biblical text, but also through a lyrical song theology. African American scholars C. Eric Lincoln and Lawrence H. Mamely clarify that by and by was not simply an otherworldly fancy. Now, these hymns are also addressed to helping the oppressed survive this world through hard times. Stanza 1 paints a picture of restless seas and howling tempest that will eventually give way to that land of perfect day when the mists have rolled away. Stanza 2 speaks of the economic condition of many of Tinley's parishioners. Destitute of things that life demands, want of food, want of shelter, thirsty hills and barren lands. Stanza 3 invokes the image of the promised land found in Exodus and Deuteronomy. Just as the children of Israel follow the pillar of fire through the desert, Tinley exhorts, He guides us with His eye, and we'll, we will follow till we die. Stanza 4 cautions the singer to watch out for temptations and hidden snares that often take us unawares. Perhaps like Job, we wonder why the test, even when we try to do our best. The refrain beginning, by and by, when the morning comes, echoes the psalmist, 30 verse 5, that weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. In the morning, we will experience the community of the saints of God gathered, and we'll tell the story how we've overcome, and finally we'll understand it by and by. Now indeed, Tinley's theology is not escapist pie in the sky. It's a theology of hope that exemplifies this scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I am known in part, but then I shall know even fully as I am known. See, friends, there are times in this life when we are left to, to wonder if the dimness of the darkness in front of us will ever clear. I can't help but imagine maybe we're there now. In the midst of four months into this crisis that we are experiencing that has changed our way of life in so many ways, certainly changed the way that we do church. Now, at our worst, we can be tempted to surrender to a fatalistic thinking that everything is not going to work out, or an escapist ideology to imagine what, what it will be like 
on the other end. What it will be like when we're out of all of this. The words of Paul and the words of Charles Tinley both serve as a witness to God's grace and God's love. When we are tempted, we need not succumb to the murky shadows that are around us today. By and by, my Lord, we will understand. By God's grace and by God's love, we can see through the dim reflection in front of us until one day our faith will become fully sight. So first, I would say from this Scripture that by God's grace and by God's love, we can see through the dark shadows of sorrow until joy breaks through. Just as the psalmist in Psalm chapter 30 and verse 5 declares that weeping may last for the moment, but joy will come in the morning. Reminded of the words of the psalmist also, Psalm 88, My eye grows dim through sorrow. Every day I call on You, O Lord. I spread out my hands to You. Do You work wonders for the dead? Do, you, do the shades rise up to praise You? Is your steadfast love declared in the grave, says the psalmist, or your faithfulness in Abaddon? See, the psalmist here was only able to see through a dim mirror. But friends, by and by, on some glad morning, the grave indeed does declare the steadfast love of God because the stone, friend, is rolled away and Jesus is risen from the dead. And we are a people of resurrection. And there is no grave, there is no sorrow that can endure longer than the love of God. The love of God that rose Jesus from the dead is the same love of God that is shed abroad in our hearts to face whatever is before us, not in despair, but with great hope. By God's grace and by God's love, we can see through the dark shadows of chaos until peace reigns. I'm reminded of the scene in Mark chapter 4 where Jesus, out on the boat with the disciples, caught in the midst of, of a storm that has taken them, and you can only imagine, just like the words that we sang in, in the hymn of, of the tempest and the storm, that they did not understand in the moment that the Master of, of all of creation, the One who has the power to speak to calm the waves, was on board. And I can only imagine, as Jesus spoke those words, peace be still, and the storm began to quiet, that the disciples, their eyes began to see through the haze, to see what power and what love is present. Friends, the same Jesus that was with the disciples that day is with us today. And whatever chaos is, is mounting around us or in your life, I want you to know today that that same Jesus offers peace in the midst of chaos. And lastly, by God's grace and by God's love, we can see through the dark shadows of this earth until heaven breaks through. I'm reminded of the Gospel of John, chapter 1. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory. The glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Friends, in Jesus, heaven has come to earth. And Jesus has come to inaugurate the kingdom of God. And when we pray the prayer, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we are invoking the powers of heaven to be made known in this earth. Now we still see through a dim mirror and we're still waiting for, for the day when the fullness of God's salvation will be revealed. But in the time being, I want to encourage us to hold fast to the glimpse that we have. However dim it may be by circumstances in life, we can hold fast to the truth that there is coming a day when the clouds will be rolled back. 
And we will understand better by and by. When the way grows dim, friends, keep on following the way of God's love and God's compassion. His love will lead the way. The compassion of God will lead the way. And let's let the excellent way of love shape our new normal. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn will be Standing on the Promises. So I invite you to please stand as you are able, and we'll sing our closing hymn together. joining us uh, in worship today. I'm going to offer a prayer, a blessing uh, for the offering. Uh, you're welcome to leave your offering in the offering plate uh, by the door as you leave. Give as you are able. Uh, receive uh, this prayer and blessing and benediction. Let us pray. Gracious God, we humble ourselves this day. We offer you our thanks and praise, trusting that your love and your compassion will triumph mightily over all the sorrows of this earth. Give us your grace and strengthen us, Lord, in this time and in these days. As we go forth, O oh God, fill us with your love, that your love may go forth into all the world. Help us to faithfully give of our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that all may know that Jesus is Lord. We pray all this in the name and to the glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
And now, may the words that we've said with our lips be believed in our hearts. What we believe in our hearts may we practice in our lives. In the name of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in love and in peace.